<laughs> so, welcome to another Barefoot Miniatures Rundown, in which it sort of looks like on the camera screen that me and Phil have coordinated, but we've in fact not, I promise you. <laughs> for once. Yeah, for once. Uh, we're going to be going through the Space Wolves Legion, where we all know the Space Wolves have always been very good in heresy. Yeah. I Well, I used to play Space Wolves in, like, third and fourth ed. And I then, used to play them in second... Oh, so you're, you are also returning. Yeah, yeah. So I used to play them in second uh, when they had like, the long fangs that were sticking rocks in their rocket launchers when they ran out of ammo because that's the way it works, clearly. Oh, is that what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In one of the fluffy, like the second edition book. <laughs> right, okay. Sound, sounds legit. <laughs> sounds like something Space Wolves would do. So we're going to go over Space Wolves of their uh, Legion Stati special rule, their advanced reaction, warlord traits. Rise of War units, and we're going to go with Russ at the end, because as we said the first time we tried to record this that you guys won't see, you obviously leave the money shot till end. You're not going to start with the money shot, and then, unless it's a compilation, in which case I might just combine all the Primarchs when I've got to the end. Oh, that would be be awesome, that, just cutting out all the Primarch bits, so it's just like one massive Primarch Primarch money shot compilation. There, There we go, heard it here first. So... And we're gonna go first over bestial savagery. Oh, bestial. Be- well, it's only bestial if you insert an A where there isn't an A. Oh yeah, it's bestial. So bestial, because yeah. we're not. We are not savages, but uh, bestial. So a unit entirely made up of models with infantry and leading static space or special rule that chooses to run in the movement phase may still make a shooting attack in the shooting phase, and declare a charge in the assault phase. But any shooting attack. Um, after this run of snapshots, units that cannot run um, and do not have vehicle or infantry instead gain plus one weapon skill in a turn which they charge, even if the charge is disordered. Models with the vehicle unit type increase their ram attack strength by one to a maximum of ten. What a <laughs> legion trait. Right, so that is one of the best Saudin legion rules it's amazing it's yeah. amazing it makes the, the the entire army really fast and if your heavy units or your cataphraxy that can't run they're now you know weapon skill five or weapon skill six depending on the unit yeah well your basic your basic terminators to which to everyone else are weapon skill four mm-hmm. which is a massive hindrance in this edition yeah your basic terminators on the charge are weapon skill five exactly so that's just amazing. That means you, you're getting hits back at fives and you're hitting on threes. Against weapon skill four. Uh, against yeah. weapon skill four. It's just an, uh, an absolute brilliant, brilliant um, trait, really. Yeah. And the run, the run and charge. Yeah. So that's extending your threat range of Space Wolf Legion. Like On first turn, if you've got an average initiative, your threat range for a charge is 22. Yeah. Well, that's every turn. But it means if they've even crept forward two inch on their turn, you, you can you, long bomb a you charge. You can long bomb a charge. Yeah, it's 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 just crazy. I think the um, the shooting for me is something that I wouldn't really look at doing. I would really want to get. Well, the, it'll trigger someone else's reaction. Yeah. If you do those snapshots, so, so I suppose what? you could run into a position. Say, like, oh, my melter guns are miles out, they're not going to be able yeah. to shoot anything. Move, run, melter gun to try and get in that melter range with your six, you know, yeah, you're you, in on sixes or then. If you get into the 12 that allows you to shoot the melter guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might do that against a tank which is only shooting defensive weapons back. Yeah, but I, I, I honestly can't see why I would want to move, run, shoot, I, 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 you know, when I'm hitting on sixes, unless it's those very rare occasions where I'm out of range. Or if I want to run into cover, shoot, so then I'm in cover when I'm return when I'm getting return fired on from a reaction. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 not why why you've come here, but it's a nice little little bone. both. Yeah. yeah. I think the the units that can't run getting plus one to weapon skill to charge is huge. Because the way that the weapon skill chart works and the... Well, it means you can lean... Because it's all based on your army, not your opponent's. Yep. It means you can lean into it when you want to lean into that. So if you want breaches, now the weapon skill five on the chart. Exactly. If you want just a faster army, you stick with Grey Slayers, Grey Stalkers. Yep. Or you could then start putting heavy unit, heavy characters 
in units of grey stalkers. So then they can't run and charge, but uh, they can now be weapon skill five when they do get in there. Uh, yeah, it's filth, in it? Yeah, that is complete horrible, <laughs> horrible stuff. It's yeah. absolutely disgusting, isn't it? I know. It's just, it's just. Is that a, how it works? So you can't that you, that character, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong. That character because he's heavy, yeah, w- can't run. So then would prevent the unit from running, and because they can't run anymore, even though they're not heavy, because it says that the unit can't run, they would now become weapon skill five on the charge. Oh my! So God. if you if you've got like a a Yarl or a Thane, stick him in Terminator armor. Put him in a unit, not only to like a credible well, combat character. Oh my god, that's such it, a horrible combat. You, you need one Spartan Death Star that then splits up. Yeah. And then they join the squad. That's the I honestly told you. It's it's a really, really strong uh what, Yeah, and just uh, being faster uh, than train. every other Legion. Well there's no point in taking like assault marines because your guy you, there's so much almost the same well, speed. It's, yeah, it's, so. you lose the plus one distance for charge yeah and you lose about two inches of movement because because movement of the 12 yeah, versus yeah, yeah. movement 10 including the run so it's just not worth the points it's not worth the points difference to go assault marines no, no not at all uh horrible moving on <laughs> moving on so we're going to go into the advanced reaction no no prey escapes the wolf which is quite a strong name strong yeah. name i yeah, approve yeah. of that name yeah Powerful name, isn't it? Like, yeah. Oh, it really gets you going. So this advanced reaction wants per battle like any... I'm any, surprised. Like I'm so every surprised. advanced reaction. Yeah. When an enemy unit with one or more models within 12 inches of a friendly unit made up of Legion Astarte special rule... Uh, they're so wordy. They, I, I say this in every review. Yeah. The, the, the books the, the, are the, so just, wordy. Do you know what it could just be? Just bullet points? Yeah. This is the condition that it happens. This is what you do. This is how you do it. And I think that would make it so much easier to digest. Yeah. But So basically, you once the enemy has finished moving, if it's still got to be within 12 inches, yep. but you move your initiative characteristic. Highest initiative highest, characteristic. Yeah, highest initiative, initiative characteristic. characteristic. And then declare a charge, yes. which they can't then react to because it's their turn, so they nope. can't do Overwatch or hold the line. Exactly. And you count as charging then. To get there is, the there is a drawback. There is a drawback. Yeah. You've got to have line of sight. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. exactly. But with putting just basic characters that are initiative five or like some other... Maybe Ross. Ross, initiative, initiative seven... seven you move seven inches then towards it with the tight with your Varigir or whatever. And you now need to average, uh, because Russ is in there at least movement eight, yeah. you now need to average a roll of like a five. Yeah. Or No, less. Less than a roll. three. You need to get a three on your dice. To roll. get in there. It, it, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Who knew Space War? Before, like, la- I know last edition, Grace Layers got it, but between this edition and last edition, who knew Space Wolves would be so incredibly fast? I know. I know. It's just... Do you know what? I, I do like it, though, because if, you, if you've read Prospero Burns and they've got the Wolves and the and the, the Space with Vilka Fenrika, let's call them that, because I really hate the fact they're called Space Wolves. Oh, I, I do. Prospero Burns, actually, is one of my favourite yeah. books in the Heresy. Yeah, yeah. And so um, the, the Vilka Fenrika, uh, they're running at the same speed as the Fenrisian Wolves. Yeah. So I actually really like... But surely, all space, but surely all space marines I don't, well, can run at the speed of a wolf. Stop my immersion. No, but he's, so like, a, a, what initiative is a wolf? It's like initiative four, right? Uh, I don't but, know. Like, let's assign a value <laughs> to a real world wolf. I reckon wolves are at best initiative four. Okay. Right? Because they're not, like, initiative five, they, it can't be initiative five. Some primarchs are initiative five. Are they? Yeah. Oh, right. Perturabo is initiative five. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter he's got he's got strength seven mega fists but yeah so the wolves are not primark levels of speed no so they four so with every marine is initiative four but we're talking about movement not initiative with crossover characteristics uh, how can you have a speed in one way oh well like i can like twitch my fingers really fast but i can't move it well that there you go you've just did fish between the two stats <laughs> moving swiftly on moving swiftly on 
So, right, yeah. That's the advanced reaction. It's really good. It's the fact that you get that initiative increase to the charge range. Yeah. Like, say, Blood Angels don't get that. They have to weather a shooting attack and then get to charge. These, with their initiative off. Yeah, and it's... The Imperial Fist have one very similar, but they've got to be within 10 inches and you've just got to make the charge. You've got to make the charge, haven't you? Oh, yeah. So this one's, like, massively better. Yeah, because you get that. Oh. Oh. Horrible. <laughs> so, on to Space Wolf Warlord traits. I mean, this is stacking up to be a very good Legion already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just, just with Bestial Savagey and no no Prey Escapes the Wolf, it, uh, they're already pretty powerful. Yeah. So, Howl of Morkai. So, this was a Warlord trait in the last edition, where you and you could yeah. stack up to, like, three Howls of Morkai. I don't know whether you can do that anymore, but we'll see. So, once per battle, the controlling player of a Warlord with this trait may use it at the start of any player t- at the start of their player turn for the duration of that player turn all friendly models with the legion starty space war special rule gain a plus one strength if the unit they are part of has successfully charged an enemy unit flat in addition an army whose warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction in the movement phase so no one escapes the wolf mm-hmm. because you've got an additional yeah reaction in the movement phase Right, you, you run this down. I want to I want to read this again. So, with it, it doesn't actually say you have to make a successful charge in the turn that you declare Howl of the Morkai. It just says that you have to have made a success, successfully charged an enemy unit, but it doesn't say in the turn that you declare the Howl. Because it's the entire game. So it's the entire game. So if you've charged something in turn one... And then you do the howl in turn three. Any unit that's made a charge gets plus one strength. Because it doesn't say you have to make the successful charge in the turn that the howl's made. Yeah, it's just, just that turn you get just, plus one you strength. Just, that turn you get plus one strength. So whenever you've made a successful charge, even if you, if you do... If it, you're not in combat, if you've successfully charged previously... If you've successfully charged previously, and now it's like, say, turn two, you successfully charged something, you swept them... And then you go in. It's turn four, and you're going to go for another unit. Your unit might be depleted a little bit. You pop the howl of Morkai straight away, and because that unit's already made a charge successfully beforehand, it now gets its plus one to strength. That's crazily good. Like it's an army wide buff. I really like army wide buffs. Yep. And as they go, that is a really good one. It ties in with your advanced reaction. Yep. You're trying to get in combat. If you're not trying to get in combat as a space will player, what are you doing? Exactly. Like, play go play Iron Warriors with me. I mean like, if if you use your advanced reaction with something and you draw the combat or they don't run away, yeah. and you need to beat that unit, the next turn you howl off Mark I, and then your 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 squad's now are wounded on threes or twos mm. against whatever they're locked in combat with. It's, it's really, really Bonkers. good. Bonkers. So, Hunger of the Void, among the Yarls of the... Sp- and I'll read this one because it's like one line. Among the Yarls of the Space Wolves, there are those whose bloodlust have become a thing of dark legend. Ooh. <laughs> the really, the really Halloween really episode. <laughs> so, a warlord with this trait gains an additional wound in at the end of any assault phase if he inflicts at least one unsaved wound on an enemy model. This cannot increase the... Warlord's wounds characteristic above starting value. If the effect is triggered while the Warlord is at the maximum possible runes, he instead gains plus one attack and strength until the end of the controlling player's next turn. In addition, may make an additional reaction in the assault phase, so long as he's not dead. Mm. That's crazily good. Yeah. That is crazily yeah. good. It's a really, really nice one. Attack and strength. Yeah. The, the thing that I... Th- I think uh, hunger, hun- hunger of the Void is really, really good, and I really like it, but it only affects your Warlord, and I like my Warlord traits to affect my army, not well, you're just one same, team. Yeah. Same team. So I've played a lot of armies where the Warlord trait just affects the Warlord, and yes, it makes your Warlord like an absolute beat stick, um, because if he's just killed a couple of mooks... He, he's, he's he, getting it. He's getting it, and it could be something where... Somebody's got their really tooled up combat character and they go, oh, I miss you in a challenge. You set to be your sergeant. He murders a few mooks. Then it's your turn and you go, right, well, I'll, I'll, you know, he kills your sergeant. I'm going to go and issue a challenge now. And he's got plus one strength, plus one attack. So could easily try and get rid of him. So he's really, really good. Any space will play, by the way, that sends their sergeant 
to accept a challenge though by the way yeah you pack, need, pack it's up like a chaos along. lord you need to always be accepting them challenges. yeah you always need to be because it's just like you, come on I know I know come on <laughs> uh, maybe you just look at him and go come on lad. yeah I don't come think on. it's as good as Howl of the Death uh, Howl, Howl of the Mordecai, Mordecai because it's just it's not the army wide book yeah yeah so I, I would personally go Howl of Mordecai over that so Crown Breaker the enemy the Warlord and all models in the unit he's joined gain the preferred enemy independent character special rule. And that means if there is an independent character in your opponent's unit, that transfers to you attacking that entire unit. Yeah. So you basically just gain preferred enemy unit. every unit which has <laughs> a preferred independent, independent character. character. Yeah. Those models also gain the Feel No Pain 5 plus special rule when locked in a combat with one or more enemy models with the independent character special rule. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction in the movement phase. Really good for character hunting. Uh, yeah, so there'll be some there'll be some legions that rely on having characters. Yeah. Thinking Thousand Sons straight away, because that's where all their magic yeah. mumbo jumbo is. This would make you could have like one unit just going around taking all those heads and clearing them all off. Yeah. And I think that's really, really good. Is it just independent character? Yes, it's just independent character. Right, okay. So, but what you could do, just throwing it out there, you could just take maximum squad sizes yep. and get and make a Death Star and just multi charge. Yeah. Or, or just charge and everything. And I think like with one of the factions that's come out, Mechanicum, with they rely on their independent characters. There's only a there's only a few independent characters in that list though, because you take in Archmagos, and then you can take two Dominuses. Yeah. But there's no other independent. There's no more independent characters. But you'd probably always take those three HQs though. I don't know. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, this is space no, no, review. No, another now. day, another day. Yeah. But yeah, but I think that I think it's really I th- good. I think it's really good. I still like Howl of Morkai better. It's an army wide buff. Army wide buffs are always the way to go. I don't think I think it's although it's got a situation behind it. I think you you're gonna get space wolf units charge in turn two. Yeah. Turn, if somebody cocked up even turn one. Yeah. So yeah, fairly reliably. I don't fairly reliably. So I I think for me Howl of Morkai. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So on to the rights of war. Space wolves are out of war. The Black Watch. So this can only be taken by an allied detachment and it represents the the watch, watch packs. packs that are mo- like moseying about the galaxy. T- keeping an eye on everyone else because it really did a d- good job. Yeah, they were I mean, really like, great. Yeah, they... Oh, let's not go into this. <laughs> <laughs> so the detachment may not do any models with vehicle or Primark so you can't have Russ in there and it can only be used by a loyalist allegiance yeah. army. And it's, I've done it like that because that sort of sets the tone for this. Right Before you get into the benefits, because yeah. the benefits, I think, on this. Because uh, this is an allied, yeah, yeah. It's an allied detachment. It's meant to be a small amount of space we'll keep yeah. their eye on. Making sure everyone else is following the rules. Following them rules, you know, not using like like, not like the using space psychers. rules always do. They follow the rules. Really yeah, but they well, don't, don't use they? psychers. They use the the world power. Uh, and, of... and I suppose they don't have any mutations, but all of them grow fine. It's not, it's not mutations. The, it's the, the all helix. the all Can- father helix. intended that. The all father the intended Canis that. The helix. Yeah. 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 So all models with the Legion status space wolf rule uh, in this attachment gain the hatred traitors and preferred enemy Primark special rules. Surely it should be hatred loyalists and preferred enemy loyalist primarchs because they're keeping an eye on the loyalists. I think actually it should just be hatred space yeah. marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then preferred enemy primarch because although I know it's designed that you're supposed to be playing like loyalist versus traitor this thing, yeah. but they would actually be going after watch packs would be popping up everywhere, wouldn't they? Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I know I know why they've done it that way. But. Yeah, because obviously that's how it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna have you can't have a watch back in a, a loyalist army and you're not gonna attack your own army. Oh, yeah, yeah. So all models in a detachment with this special rule gain the fearless special rule when locked in combat with a Primark that has the traitor special rule or traitor allegiance. 
Yeah, really good, mm, really good. Mm. So, like the best version of Fearless. Yeah. Like I only, you only get it in combat, so you can still get shrouded when you're being shot at. Just put 20-man breach unit into a Primarch and watch. The, the Primarch will chew through the breach unit, but even if there's one guy left, he's not running away. Yeah. And I think that's really, really good. But it can be a double edged sword. Sometimes you want your, your unit to run away so you can blast them. In the next yeah, well, if I've got the if you've got the Primark like in a really weird position, like right in their backfield, yeah, and you've got them tied up there, so that and it's a slow one, let's like say it's like Perty or Horus, yeah, then you're taking him out of the game with like yeah, but this is so there. situational. Like, where's well, that Primark not going to be like rocking about in the middle of the board? I think well, you can also tie him up though because you could do the advanced reaction, can't you? That's the thing. I think I think that's really really good. I think it's really good for. Time. I think it's really good, but I just think your your example is the worst. No, it's not. So perfectly good example. When using a unit from this detachment, using this right war has. To, uh, when a unit from a detachment using this right of war has a charge declared for it, char that's re that's. Try, try, it's when, it charge, again, it again. when it charges an enemy unit that includes a primarch. That's, that's, why have they worded it like this? The unit gains a bonus of plus two to its charge roll made to determine its charge distance. But you get plus two to your charge if there's a prime mark in the opponent. That is unit. such an easier way to say it. Basically, yeah, you're again taking out enemy prime marks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It all stacks up to a fairly nice sort of like attack detachment against yeah. enemy prime marks specifically. But... I suppose you've got the Hatred Traitors special rule on the Allied Detachment. Yeah. So it's not just against Primarch. Most of your things come against the enemy Primarch. The thing is, against Primarchs, you're not going to do that well no. pretty much ever because Primarchs are just such beat sticks now. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're charging a unit of Terminators into a, into a Primarch even by himself, the Primarch's winning that fight. Yeah, you know pretty I mean? much. It, it pretty much. A lot of Because you, you're hitting on like fives or sixes, the Primark is going to beat, beat you. A lot of the time, especially if it's like, if they've got some form of, form of instant death yep. level attack. Exactly. At just swipe, swipe through the unit. So yep. yeah, although there's like a load of bonuses stacked up, I, and I, I, I was, still wouldn't go against Primark. I was like, oh yeah, I can just tie up the unit over there. I wouldn't want to charge anything against the Primark apart from another Primark. I'd just let him, I'd, I'd let them charge me in the next turn. Yeah. Would be one thing that I did. So we're going to Pale Hunters. There's not much without going around in circles that we can say really on the block book. It's good to get for an allied detachment. Are you watching this video because you want to run an allied detachment or a space <laughs> yeah. That's So the Pale Hunters, and I'll do this in a regular conventional order now, all models in a Grey Slayer or Grey Stalker pack from this detachment, using the Rat of War, gain the hit and run special rule, and when making hit and runs, may choose to move a number of inches up to the distance rolled rather than the full distance, so long as they remain at least one inch from an enemy unit at the end of this move. I, di I didn't know in hit and run you had to move, you had to move you the full distance. You have to distance. move the full distance. No way. You have to move the full distance. So it's... it's Hit and run, but better. So, yeah, so you could just, like, you hit and run, and you move an inch away, so then you can charge. And gain your plus one weapon skill. And gain, gain your plus one weapon skill, or your, you know, your plus one attack, or start stacking your bonus. Or you can slingshot out of units yeah. and get yourself across the board further and further. Yeah. Like, oh, I need to, I've whittled down this unit, and I've got a rubbish, like, whatever, yeah. despoiler level... Do you know, like, just yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, like nearby? Some, something's tarpitting my uh, Varigir over there, so I need to throw a Grey Slayer unit into it. So I'm going to hit and run, go there, go into that. Or oh, Eagle, do you know what? I'm just going to break combat, and I'm going to go back into him so I can get my plus one attack again so I can do more mm. damage to him. Absolutely. I think it's really, really good. Yeah. So also, on the turn in which a unit from a detachment using this Rat of War enters play from flanking assault, all models in the unit gain Fleet 2 and Rage 2 until the end of the player turn in which it enters play. Incredibly good. <laughs> Up to three, and how do you get outflank? How, how do you get I, outflank I, in assault? Don't know, Max, tell me how you get outflank. Up to three units from your detachment, Phil, in a detachment using this right of war, because we've, we, I mean, we've, it's under the heading right of war, we yeah, need to yeah. be told that again. Um, if they're made up entirely of infantry or cavalry type, 
it can be used to grant our models in that unit outflank for no additional points cost. So you've got hit and run units of Grey Slayers, yep. up to three of which infantry units, but may, it'll mainly be Grey Slayers. Or oh, maybe it could be that breacher squad that's heavy and slower. <laughs> heavy and slower breacher squad. Varagir, because they're infantry. Yeah, Death Sworn, they're infantry. So you Death Sworn are sprinting across the board and No. Have they got heavy? Yeah. Oh. So you've got a real good way of just popping a unit out and then getting your your fleet two mm. and then rage rage two is amazing. Yeah, so we'll just go over the limitations yeah. of this before. So you can only use one heavy support. I think that's a big, big it's, thing. It's quite big, but sort of Crimea River. <laughs> so, <laughs> this sort of comes with Philly starting a Space Wolf army. So yeah. I used to do Space Wolves, but now it's Phil that is the main contender. The Crimea River Phil. <laughs> uh, yeah, you get a single heavy support, but your entire army is sprinting across the board. Do you know one thing I want to say about that though? Like a lot of the heavy supports now, you can take in like squadrons, squadrons or talons. So you, you. Oh no, I can only have three Leviathans. Or you know, you can take two Sakaran um, battle tanks. Yeah. Battle tanks. You know, it, it's not really a massive limitation. There are other things you can fulfil that role, especially in Space Wolves. Yes. Yeah. Like in a very combat focused army that doesn't really need transports because you're sprinting everywhere. Exactly. And this is giving the stuff that did need transports out flank, fleet, and rage too. So, yeah, so it's it's super good. Mm. The only thing is, out flank is if you play against somebody and you put your marker in the wrong place, they'll wrap it and you can't get your yeah. squad on. Yeah, if, I think you sort of want to stack your outflank marker nowadays. Yeah. Towards your board, in your half of the board. Yep. And you want to be like sort of pushing hard that side anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it's not just left open for just like random tactical squad number two. Who just. To just wrap it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how I think outflanking now you need to sort of do. Yeah. It can't be, oh. I'm the, going the deep into side their, of the, yeah, 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 I'm going deep into their lines and I'm going to go onto the opposite flank because then you just go, oh, that. 10-man tactical squad that was just going to sit scoring is just going to deny, you know, yeah. a thousand points of your army coming up. Yeah, it needs it needs to be sort of like lent into. It, yeah, rather. yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's now just an alternate way rather than having a tank. Yeah. It's not actually getting an outflank on your mm, opponent, weird, no. weirdly. So, overall, I think that is... Well, it's much better than Blackwatch. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go over the Bloody Claw, then we can sort of debate which of the two... We like more. Yeah. So the Bloody Claw, and this makes a re also makes a return. Once for battle, at the start of their player turn, a player whose army includes um, a detachment using this right of what? Why, Games Workshop? <laughs> Once the Bloody Claw is declared, and until the start of the controlling player's next turn, all Space Wolves... <laughs> Once the Bloody Cla Claw is declared, and until the start of uh, the controlling player's next turn... All models with this Legion of Starty Space Wolf Special Rule in the detachment with this Right of War. He's all, it's that twice in the same yeah, paragraph. Yeah, yeah. They gain the following benefits. Add one to the score to see if you win the assault. Gain Fleet 2, Furious Charge 1. And gain the Stubborn Special Rule. If they already had the Stubborn Special Rule that allows them to ignore modify or another Special Rule that allows them to ignore modifiers to leadership, so you Terminators with an Inexorable. Game fearless instead. That is really good. <coughs> However, it's only once per game. It is. Um, but what are the limitations on it before we go into? <laughs> Why is this is this telling? So during the turn in which the controlling player has declared the bloody claw, all units that include at least one or more models with Legion Sparty special rule that is capable of charging must attempt to charge an enemy unit in the assault phase. If multiple eligible targets, you can can choose one. Yeah. So the the. You want to be charging with the unit, yeah. so the limitation is uh, nothing, isn't uh, it? Oh, no, I'm an army that wants to be in combat. I've got to charge. Uh, yeah. yeah it's and you've made it like easier for the army to charge as well. I do think that is much worse than Pale Hunters. Even with that big limitation in Pale Hunters being like, oh, I can only take one heavy support, Pale Hunters is just so much better. 
I like them both. Um, I my, the army that I'm building can play both. Mm. It's it's no limit. You can play do both. Uh, I like pale hunters more because of the outflank, but I think it will take me longer to understand the placement of my marker and where it is. You know, get yeah. used to that. But it's the hit and run. It's just hit and run on your grey slayers and stalkers is working every single time. Yeah. Even if you're, you know, if you get caught out with a charge, you can yeah. then bounce out. Even if you just in. put like the cheap, a, a really cheap five, like a recon squad in outflank, a yeah. hundred points, just so you can get you grey sl- slayers and stalkers getting hit and run. There's such a good right of what, like yeah. there's such a good benefit. I do with the can't be overstated how good that benefit with the is. bloody claw. Yeah. I like I know it's only once per game. But getting fleet two, so being able to get closer into for the charge, and then getting furious charge one, but you can also tag that on with howl of Morkai. With the but yeah, so you get you see getting strength, you a basic grey stalker is getting strength six on the charge, which is then incredibly, which is incredibly incredible. good. So I think that one bloody chloral lies all like your ducks in a row. Yeah, you have to have everything right at the right time. Pale Hunter, even though it's got... Are you saying that's the connoisseur's choice to space No, 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 I, ju- I just think that it's... There's, there's there's too, really, if you, if it's you too like situational. to swill your wine around your mouth. <laughs> Brandy, of course, if yeah. you're being a connoisseur. But I think it's, I think it's very situational. Very, like, you may find that it never all comes off and you might do the Howl once or you might do mm. the Blue Claw next, which is still good, but the Pale Hunter is just having hit and run all the time. Yeah, just, yeah it just... Going on all the time. And and the fact that you can just go, right, I'm going to hit and run one inch away from the unit, so I'm going to charge you. Oh, I asked Master to get in. Oh, I joined the characters to the squad now, and now I get plus one weapon skill. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's just really good. So, on to the armoury of the Space Wolves. <sighs> Summary, very good. So, the Frimrisian Axe, any model with a Legion Astarte Space Wolf special rule may exchange a chain sword for a Frimrisian Axe for two points each. So, that's strength plus one, melee, reaping blow one. So, reaping blow one is if you're in base contact with, with two, two models, models get you get an extra attack. attack. Yeah. It's got no AP, so not the greatest ever, but it's two points. It's, it, these... it's, and it'll stack you to. If you do Howl of Morkai, you strength six. six. If you're in the in the Bloody Claw, strength seven. seven now. With an extra attack, and it's not specialist, so you're already getting bolt pistol, close combat weapon. It's then reaping blow one. It's gonna take you forever to argue with your opponent. Where you actually attack. go, yeah, yeah. But if you're playing Space Wolves, just let them have the attack, they're already winning that assault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you want them to win that assault, so they sweep you, and then you can shoot them. Yeah. So just let them have it. Yeah, just let them um, have it. I think with this, like, I think somebody, I was, I was looking at it the other day, and chain swords, I think, are marginally better. Oh, really? Until you get them in the reaping blow, because you get the extra attack then. Ah, right. And then so, the Femrisian yeah. Axe just, like, outdoes them it, massively. Right, so it depends how you look at it. If you're looking at it as just base plus one strength. Yeah. Yeah, the feet, right, so wounded on a four plus, which you'll be doing with a chain sword against marine on marine, with, strength four, toughness four. With a reroll. Yeah, with a reroll. Yeah. So that takes you to 75% chance of success. Yeah, yeah. Plus one strength means it's a three up, so a 66% chance yeah, of yeah. success. So, but as soon as you put on the extra plus one strength for Howl of Markai, yeah. that becomes an 83% so chance you start, of success. So yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it depends what you're going for. With that, with the Howl of Morkai, you can then start wounding Dreadnoughts much better. Wounding Dreadnoughts on, on, on either fives or fours, depending yeah. on what you're, what you're doing. I think it's really, really good. I think it's, I think it's a really... For two points, everyone's going to have one. Yeah. Yeah, it's worthwhile. It's your special thing. It's... Yeah, it's... Why not do your special thing? Exactly. Did you come here to play Space Wolves or Marines Painted Grey? <laughs> You don't have to paint them. You just leave them in bad plastic. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. I forgot that. So, Frostblades, created by the weaponsmiths of the Fang, the famed Frostblades were forged after detailed study of the arcane technology of Lehman Russ's own Emperor Gifted Blade. Glitch there we go. There every day, don't there we? Know. Know. Yeah, but is it actually made out of frost? Or Oh, yes, he's iron-hard chitting teeth of Forensian Krakens. 
as it should be, rather than the 40k actual ice weapons. Yeah. Much better, much better. I'm glad that that's in there. So, Frost Sword, plus one strength, AP3, melee specialist weapon, reaping blow one. So it's basically gain special weapon, but AP3 on what a Frisian axe yeah, has. Yeah. Frost Axe, plus one strength, AP2, the same but unwieldy. Frost Claw, strength user, AP3, melee specialist weapon, shred, reaping blow one. Great Frost Blade, strength two, AP2, reaping blow one, two handed. If you've got a power weapon, your independent character can exchange their power weapon for five points for one of these Frost Blades. Yeah. And we'll go through them, like in order. You can also exchange the power weapon for a great Frost Blade for 10 points. So, would you do this on your independent characters build? Bearing in mind, there is no Space War special rule now that you get a character every 750 points. Uh, I think the... Which is a massive shame. So, I think the great Frost Blade has got some worth in it. I know you're losing a... You're going to be losing an attack anyway because the specialist weapon usually... But with it being strength six, striking at initiative and AP two. Yeah, so it's still wounded on twos. Yep. It's at initiative. Yeah. So you're initiative five, so you've got more chance of punking the person who's got the the thunder hammer. You oh you've got a chance at least. You've got a chance at least. Uh, so I think that's really good. The other ones then. I don't think are any good. I I mean, n- no. I mean the idea I suppose is that your thunder hammer if you can if you can well if you can take a thunder hammer do you want to take one of these then to get an extra attack well you can do that it's just quite expensive and that's what I mean it starts bumping up the points then doesn't it really quite a lot so I don't really see a massive use from if characters could take them mm-hmm. so your sergeants I think they'll be able to have a lot more utility yeah well it's, I think what they they lack the rending like the sword lacks the rending the frost claw lacks the rending yeah and it just they really suffer from it because yeah. you can't get that ap2 at any point mm-hmm. and i think swords and claws especially were already well nothing's better than thunder hammer without that rending they fall, they did, yeah. falls away yeah. even more we because. saw this in the previous edition didn't we with and, and introducing the rending into them actually made them a lot better um, and Did they have rending in the last edition? Not the power sword, the lightning claw did. Oh, so we didn't see it in the last. What you mean is the transition? From yeah, the last what I mean is basically like they've just taken the weapon and dialed it back instead of dialing it forward and up. Does that make sense to you? No. Okay, move, but, move <laughs> on. Let's just move on. <laughs> I don't think they're worth taking other than maybe the great frost blade. When you can start stacking that great frost blade with things like rad bombs. Or your Howl of Morkai across your entire army that's yeah, charged. Yeah, all the Pale, uh, all, sorry, yeah, blood, pale blood, Hunters. Pale Hunters, Bloody Claw. You've then got somebody swinging Strength 8 at Initiative 5. You've just got to fail one, haven't you? And yeah. dead, the person's dead. Which is then incredibly good. Yeah. That's, so that's what gives the utility to that great frost blade. Yeah, yeah. Is that Initiative AP2 with a, you know, with a strength increase building. Yeah, yeah. That means you don't have to, like ridiculously stacked yeah 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 so aether rune armor independent characters in space walls with that don't have unique 25 points it's a two up save <laughs> wounds plus one adamantine will four plus i i like it 25 points for an extra wound is the main thing yeah to this i think that's worth it like when your model is 200 and 200 points let's just say like, what would it be? Like 185, 205 yeah, for a yeah, Praetor? Yeah. It's going to be worth it to get that extra wound. Yeah, yeah. Especially since you're striking at initiative. What you, like, if you can stack the rad bombs or anything like that into that combat as well. I you think you need to just survive people's one wound causing weapons. Yeah, yeah. So that you can, so that you can pump them first. No, I think, I think it's a really good choice. Really good buy. Um, it gives you the, also it gives you the benefit of Terminator armour because that gives you a plus one wound without making you heavy. Yeah. So you can then start, so you can run, run, charge. charge. So if you don't want the plus one weapon skill for your Praetor, if he's going to go into Grey Slayers or yeah. a Rune Priest that's going to go into Grey Slayers, put that on him. Then they've 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 got an extra wound and can still run around and everything like that. So you no, know, really really good. I think your Praetor comes out the same price as the Cataphracty. I, as the Cataphracty one. So definitely worth definitely worth it if that is. Like, yeah. That's the yeah. Case. Yeah. 
So up next, the Jarl, a Praetor, Cataphractic Praetor, Tartarus Praetor, with Space War Special Rule named upgraded to a Jarl for 10 points, gaining Counter Attack 2. A model with Jarl must... A model with the Jarl upgrade may also be given the Skirmish subtype at no additional points cost. This must be decided at the start of the battle before any models are deployed and may not be changed during the battle. I think that's really good. It's fantastic. Yeah, counter so, attack two. That can, like, I, I mean, this forces your opponent to let you charge them because do you really want to be charging into a Praetor that's now given the entire unit an extra two attacks? So yeah, you will get more attacks if they charge you than if you charge them. Yeah. Which it, is it's just ridiculous. Crazy. So you know what is it? Praetor's four attacks. So you charge him, he's got six. And if he's rocking a great frost blade, he's going to initiate five. Yeah. It's just it's just awesome. And Mental. also deciding that you're gonna give somebody skirmish at the beginning, I mean, it doesn't really you know well, it's, it's, you can choose. It's a bonus. Yeah. It's an absolute massive bonus for It's not what you're here for, but you can get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Legion Consularis Pack Thane for 10 points. Cataphracti Centurion, Normal Centurion, Tartarus Centurion, maybe upgraded to Pack Thane instead of selecting another console upgrade, granting counter attack one. May also be given the skirmish subtype at no additional points cost. Must be decided, blah 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 blah. Can't take a jet bike or combat to spath a combat bike, which the Praetor doesn't have as their one of their drawbacks. Again, exactly the same as the Yarl, really. It's worth it. Yeah. For that. That counter attack one is definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah. If you can put a load of pack thanes in different units, so like if you've got like two Grey Slayer units and you put two pack thanes in there, it the absolute become monstrous. The the difference is, I think, at the console level. Because you're going to take a Praetor anyway, right? Yeah. Your Space Wolves, you want the hittiest character around. You've got to be a Praetor. Yeah. I think there's too many other competing slots. Like, do you mean... I want to make a Rune Priest and a Wolf Priest. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean too many different console types? Can, can, yeah, yeah, competing yeah, yeah. for that slot. It's nice. Like, I want a Rune Priest and a Wolf yeah, Priest. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's really good. But I think there's... Yeah, exactly. Better ones. It's a really good 10-point upgrade. There's just, like... Librarian, like do you know everything like that. Speaker of the Dead, Caster of Runes, bam. Right. Like them, like they they are competing with them three exactly. character yeah, slots. Yeah. And I think when it used to be that you got an extra character slot every seven fifty. Yeah. I think, I think it was think every thousand, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's extra thousand. In Heresy, it was a thousand. In Space Wolves, third and fourth ed, it was seven fifty. Now you're going to want to take these ones that we've just flipped the page over to. Yeah, yeah. So Speaker of the Dead, sixty five points. All the usual how you can take them. The Speaker of Dead must increase his leadership to 10 and all models with a Space Wolf special rule in a unit that he joins gains the stubborn and hatred everything special rules. He gains a Nathesium. I heard you I heard you sigh then, by the way. You were like, oh. It's the wordiness. The, I just, I just it honestly it kills me every time I read it out. Nathesium and a Mastercrafted Power Mall for no additional points cost. May not select lightning claws or a boarding shield. Really, really stubborn and hatred everything is excellent, excellent, excellent. And then he's also your... And he's leadership uh, 10. Yeah, but he's... he's he all, must increase his leadership to 10. No, he, he, he can't, can't, not, he can't he choose, choose not to. He must do. But he's also your apothecary rolled into one as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's a... He's a Chaplin come apothecary. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the fluff behind the speak of the dead. But you've just got like... For 65 points, you've got your chaplain yep. and you've got your apothecary. It's yeah. just an amazing console upgrade. Stubborn leadership 10. Yeah. You're, not, you're never it's, failing that. But it's, it's better than fearless because you can still take a shrouded save. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. But do you know, like, it's, it's actually better than, than amazing. I would say. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And also, his limitations, by the way, of can't take two lightning claws and can't take or a boarding shield. But you can still take an, another hand weapon. Do you know what I can take? Two frost claws. Frost <laughs> claws aren't <laughs> lightning claws. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not think about that? No, no, no. <laughs> I was thinking like you've got your you've got your 
power mall. Yeah. And it's like, all right, that's all right. And, but I can take a great frost blade because that's two handed, but that doesn't stop him from doing it. Like, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. I think that needs changing to be fair. Like, yeah, it needs. Weird. It needs more where it's like you have to. You're not allowed to take two handed weapons. He, he needs his. He got to have his Crozier Arcana, yeah. but his Wolfie Arcana. Wolfie Arcana. Yeah, yeah. It is, I, I think it's an excellent upgrade. That if, if it was just stubborn and hatred, everything, it's worth it. But also, you get a five up field and pain just cause. Thanks, thanks for <laughs> yeah. coming. And it's mastercrafted power mall. I know power malls aren't great because they're like AP four, but when Solar come out that'll start being useful. Yeah. Like, even if you just have it as your backup weapon, but a Mastercrafted at initiative AP4 yeah. with plus two strength, just really good. So, Caster of Runes, 45 points, all the usual... Bump. Say, yeah, the things that I don't want to read out. Uh, Gains the Psyker subtype, must select one of the following disciplines, Winds of Fenris, Divination, Telekinesis, and Biomancy. A Caster of Runes may not select any other discipline... In addition, a caster of runes gains the Adamantium World 4 plus special rule. It may replace power weapon, bolt pistol, combi bolter with a force weapon for no additional cost. In addition, may select a psychic hood for 15 points. So, telekinesis. That's not telepathy. Which means you can't do the prevent. Oh, oh no, no. Why don't you read? No, no, I will do it. <laughs> I'm going to give the context of the best generic type. Fair enough. Right, so he can't shut down people's reactions, pin them. Yeah, yeah. What he can do is take Biomancy and buff his unit with plus one strength, plus one toughness yeah. every single time he is shot at. Oh, not every single time he's shot at. When he reacts in the shooting phase or if he is charged in the assault phase, he can overwatch Watch and, and do his do. power to yeah. get plus one strength, plus one toughness for the next turn, yeah. which you can have already done in your turn for a total a plus three strength and toughness if they charge you and shoot you. Which is mental, <laughs> right? So, knowing that, Winds of Fenris gains all the listed powers, weapons, and special rules below. Thank you. Wrath of the Death Wolf, Psychic Weapon. Range template, strength four, AP four, assault one, deflagrate force. Force doubles the strength of that attack uh, if you pass a psychic test. So it goes to strength 10, AP4, Deflag. Yeah. Really, really good. Really. It can start knocking out tanks with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's really, really good. Storm Rot, Psychic Power. Instead of making a shooting attack, the controlling player with this Psyker may select a single friendly unit with a model within six inch, gain the shrouded six inch special rule until the beginning of the controlling player's next shooting phase. When using this power, may not may choose to have the Psychic take a Psychic test. If passed, the Shroud is improved to three <laughs> no, plus. That's why I want you oh to Oh, my that. God. <laughs> three plus Shrouding. So imagine putting that in your, your, your Varagir. Your so your Varagir then have a two-up save. If that's negated, you've got they've a got four, four up, up Catafi, oh, and then a three-up Shrouded. <laughs> it's like... You, Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh, that is so good. So good with a strength ten template as well. The yeah. D flags. So you you can run them up the board, and in your shooting phase, he can put that on them, so they've got shrouded. If you're then charged, you could got a strength ten flamer template, which would do wall of death. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, thing. It, that is. I know you were saying about biomancy, but for me, no, that's much that's better. much I was, better. I was giving. I didn't know that was coming, <laughs> but I was like, do you know? I giving it some gravitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was giving it context. Let it swirl around the glass uh, a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> playing across the palette. Oh my god, that take that one. <laughs> take that. And imagine that, right? By the way, Space so, Wolves really got kissed on the dick against the issue. I mean, I know they frost. But I know they frost weapons are like crap, but that's they sort of, Games Workshop sort of went. Oh, Space Wolves were really good last edition. Let's just maintain that. Do you know what? Let's, let's just keep that going. I mean, I mean, it's it's so so good because there's so much utility in that. You know, put them in a heavy weapon support squad. Yeah. I'm gonna return fire. Oh, he's gonna do. Oh no! I'm now I'm shining three plus. And I'm shining three plus. I return fire. And that comes. That comes before your damage mitigation yeah. rolls. So you like? Oh, I'm gonna choose to get shrouded right now. Yeah. 
So you get shrouded and then you do all the damage and then the damage mitigation rules are done. It's just it's just unbelievable. You can have casting runes everywhere. Right, so you've got three HQ slots. Yeah. I'm imagining one of them goes on the Yarl. Definitely. Yeah. What are your other two? Right. Fluff wise, whatever the hell you want, one of one of two types, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to win the game. What do you do? Uh, two caster of runes. Yeah. 100%. Two caster of runes. A hundred percent. One one in the most ridiculous. One, one that's going with your beach stick unit that's going up the board and one that It doesn't have to be going with the beach stick unit. It can be within six Six inches. inches. Yeah, well six inches. Because I mean, you do it once in your turn, to, it, within six inches to that unit that I want to. Yeah, yeah. Then, they're not going to fire at that unit, because that's already got a three-up shrouded. So, your oh, unit. so they fire at the caster's unit. Oh, I'm going to have a three-up shrouded. So yeah. It's Any, crazy. Anything that's going to be high firepower as well, it needs one in there. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh... I mean, I mean, I know this is really out there. No one's really been doing it. But this is groundbreaking. But say you possibly wanted to take a last cannon squad. <laughs> that one's that one's a caster of runes. Crazy craziness. Yeah. Craziness. Massively kissed on the dick. So then we'll go into the special the the special units. Death Swarm pack. One hundred and seventy five points. You have got movement seven. So basic, but that's important because you're going to want to get into your charges you're going to get your plus one weapon skill but weapon skill four so you're going to be five on the charge, charge. it's a, it's worse than a space marine veteran stat line two wounds two attacks leadership eight two up save you've got that two up save but you're missing the weapon skill five from a veteran yeah. stat line yeah you've got a bolt pistol power axe frag grenades crack grenades you mirror class, class stasis, stasis bombs, bombs. Artificer armor, you're heavy, so you're getting the plus one weapon yeah, skill. You can't you can't run with them. Yeah. Court of Markai, Dreams of the Death Wolf, counterattack one already, stubborn. At leadership eight. Mm-hmm. It's alright. Leadership eight isn't the best. It's not, it's not terrible. Yeah. You've got you can include an additional five death swarm for 30 points each. So the unit tax is like 25 points. Any model may exchange its power axe for a power fist, which is Tasty. It's very it's pretty pricey though, isn't it? 15, 15 point, points. Yeah, but it means that you can run them into Terminator units and be doubling out those Terminators. Mm-hmm. A great so one in every five can take a great frost blade for 10 points each or a thunder hammer for 20 points each. I think one in five are gonna have a thunder hammer. I'm I, you see, I, I'm I'm, I'm right, torn so, on this because the thunder hammer striking last. But I've got more chance of killing the person beforehand with the Great Frostblade. So, so I right, I think know. it comes in. The entire unit may take one of the following options: melter bombs, rag grenades. So if I'm gonna take rag grenades, if I take rag grenades and a, grenade. and a great frost blade, yeah, then you're doubling out things. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really understand why you would take melter bombs with this unit. Because you're gonna need melter bombs somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but like rag grenades affect dreadnoughts. Yeah, well, so the melt bombs. I mean, you could just strike last and yeah, where you've got yeah. I don't. I, I see. I'm not a bit like mm. right. So let's go through these special rules, okay? And then we can argue about this. So cult of Markai may not be joined by models with independent character unless it's other than models with speaker dead or caster of runes upgrade. I mean, you're only ever taking caster of runes, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. In addition, a death swarm pack may be selected as a retinue. That includes at least one Speaker of the Dead or Caster of Runes instead of an Elite's choice. Selected as a Retinue squad must have one model with the Speaker of the Dead or Caster of Runes upgrade from the same detachment selected by... Fucking hell, this is a confused special rule. It what becomes, does it, it mean? Become what a, does it mean it's them? basically, if you have a Speaker of Dead or a Rune Priest, you can take these as a command squad for that Rune Priest or Speaker of the Dead. Not the Yarl. Not the Yarl. So you Only. can also have a Varagir squad as a retinue. So you for... could, I, you could also. I don't think Varagir can be or a command squad. Then. But you could also have a command squad for that. But what happens is then is that your room priest and can't leave. Can't leave. They're stuck in there. But you, they then share because they become part of the unit. They then get the the stuff that's part of the unit. So mm. they'll get the heavy subtype. Right. Which then you've got your speak of the dead and cast the runes and then. Weapon skill six when they charge. Yeah. So Dreams of the Death Wolf, 
if a Death's War model loses its last wound during the assault phase before having made its attacks, place that model to one side instead of it removing it as a casualty. Well, I usually place things to, to one, one side, side when yeah. I'm removing as a casualty. casualty. In initiative step one, all models placed to the side in this fashion may make a single attack before it's been removed as a casualty. Still counted as killed for who has won combat. Mm -hmm. So that then means that those melter bombs, if you the dread has killed you, can still, you, you can still use your melter bombs at the end. So they're a decent dread hunting unit. In, in both ways, really. So either with the red grenades or the melter bombs, they're a both they're a decent dread hunting. Well, it's because it's only a single attack with that power axe. Mm. Or power fist. I'd, I'd go with the melter bomb because it's got instant death. Yes, yeah, so they're taking D three wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Emira class stasis bombs. Any unit which successfully charges a unit that includes one or more models with Emira class stasis bombs must make a disorder charge. In addition, the controlling player of a unit that includes the of this unit um, may choose to access the bombs when charging before the dice are rolled to determine charge distance. They remain activated until the next turn and may be activated again if it's later charge or charges. Um, whilst activated, add both Fleshbane and Gets Hot to all attacks made during the fight subphase. All wounds inflicted by the Gets Hot special rule on a model are resolved at the AP value of the weapon. The model. The, it, Basically, you activate all, them before all Gets the Hot is yeah, done at the, 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 the AP of the weapon. Of the weapon. Yeah. And you activate them before the charge, and you get Fleshbane, which is a two up to wound. Yeah. I think you're probably already doing that because you've got a power axe and rad grenades. But it makes them, re again, a really good dreadnought hunting unit. It does, but... So then you've got to take your melter bombs on it. I know I was just saying you might want to take your mm -hmm. melter bombs to do that. Unless you're doing, like... Think how many dreads are in the game now. You can't trade death sworn units with dreads one for one. Do you know what, If on a... You can take three dreads per talent. Yeah, yeah. And they were 175 points each. Before the, the melter bombs. The yeah, yeah. Score, no, I understand what you mean. They're they already... too many points and they're taking up a slot each rather than a, 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 a slot. Yeah, yeah. No, I get what you mean there. I don't think you can trade them one for one and that's what you'll be doing if you take melter bombs against yeah. dreads. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it just gives them that versatility really it's mm. it's a thing where it's a trade-off where if you get caught out and you're charged you can be like all right at least i've got a chance now to severely wound it or kill it yeah so i think i, I i'd go with those rag grenades yep with the great frost blade as you're saying because it's then you doubling out people you're doubling out veterans at initiative you're doubling out terminators at initiative. yeah 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 it's just horrible you don't need to do anything else to that unit you don't need to combine it with anything else to get at initiative killings yeah. with the great frostblade. Yeah, yeah. It's just so good. So I think that unit's worth taking. If if it becomes apparent that this unit pales in insignificance, like say Praetorian Breaches against Suzerain. Yeah, yeah. It's yet it, it'll be because we're spoiled by another unit, not that this unit isn't good. No, I, I think I think it's quite a solid unit. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife a little bit. It's got quite a lot of things going on. So you'd be having to pick your target really well with it. Yeah. If you get charged, though, you don't have to panic that much because you've got your rad grenades and then your Yamira class stasis bombs. If you get caught out, so you yeah. can then be wounding things on two. Uh, also, you've got your attack that you can do. Yeah. I think like a rune priest attached to these will give them that three up shrouded. So they're not going to be losing guys as they're running across the field. But having to speak of the dead means you're not going to lose people to your, uh, yeah. to, to your get hot. Shrouded, yeah. So it, there's a bit of a trade off there. So I, I would be interested to see. I go through it shrouded every time. <laughs> yeah, so would like I. Every so would I. So would I. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't take this unit without putting a Speak of the Dead or Castle of Ruins with it I would never have this by itself roaming around why not because I think there's just more utility by having the Speak of the Dead in there with the hatred everything with the feel no pain I think at weapon skill 4 yeah that's the case yeah if I, it was weapon skill 5 base I wouldn't have a problem I'd be yeah. like yeah off you pop go up, go you know go and do what you need to do with the Rune Priest, you've just got like a, a more tankier unit because these yeah. are going to attack. These are going to get a lot of fire. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, so they see what we're comparing them to. So on to the Varigir Wolfguard, Terminator Squad. 250 points, their weapon skill 5 now. Oh, not now, but like Terminator Squad weapon skill 5 compared to the weapon skill 4 mm-hmm. on the Death Swarm. Two wounds like every other Terminator Squad. Initiative 4, two attacks, leadership 8, two up save. They're stubborn on that leadership 8. Nine on the sergeant with three attacks on the sergeant. Yep. God, they've got a lot of special rules. Fear 1, relentless like a Terminator. Counter-attack 1, stubborn. Hammer of Wrath 2, Lord's Bane, bulky 2. So it sort of starts, that, that counter-attack 1 from the pack thing mm-hmm. isn't needed here. Is it isn't needed, needed in the uh, Death Swarm. No. So it's it's getting less needed to have that pack thing other than, say, on your, your Grey Stalkers, Grey Slayers, <laughs> when you're going to be outside of their charge range yeah, yeah. because you can run and charge. So they get one of the following Frost Axe, Frost Sword, Frost Claw, Combi Bolter. Oh, yeah. In addition to the Combi Bolter. They're in Cataphracty all the time, can take transports, up to five extra for 45 points each. Any model in the unit may exchange its frost blade for a power fist, chain, up, chain fist, or thunder hammer. One variegate may take a vexilla, but <laughs> <laughs> but any model in the unit may exchange its combi bolter for one of them. The following: blah 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 blah. Second frost blade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this? Magna combi weapons, minor combi Ev- weapons, heavy everyone. flame and reaper. Take a normal Terminator squad if that's what you're going for. Yeah, yeah. The second frost blade, I think you want to go claw yeah, and yeah. thunder you, with your thunder hammer. Yeah. Because you've then got the AP two with brutal two to smash people at initiative one. Yeah. And it's your only real option at initiative because you've not got the great frost blade access in like squad wide. Yeah, yeah. You want to go with. Just the best AP3 you've got. Yeah. I think I'd put a couple of chain fists in this unit as well, just in case they come up. You know, you, you want them to go against some armor. Do you not think you'll just smash people at your strength, like strength eight? Bam, bam. I, but if you if you've got a land raider in front of you, yeah, or a Spartan, you sixes. Yes. Yeah, Where if you've got two chain fists with their three attacks, four if you've charged, you just go in, boom, dead. Yeah, I suppose, like, just a couple of... Just two, just two, yeah, like, just nothing... Like spring, just a... a little sp- sprinkling. Like a parmesan. Yeah, parm. <laughs> and if there isn't anything that's, like... If there isn't any um, vehicles on the board, because you a lot of people taking infantry heavy, they're your first two that die. They're yeah. the first two you pick off, aren't it's they? It's the same points as just having them all with pa- Exactly. Pa- pa- yeah. So the Thane can exchange his pro- frost blade for a great frost blade. I'd do it. I wouldn't. Would you not? No. I would. Uh, there we go. I would take the Thunder Hammer <laughs> on this unit. I think the Thunder Hammer... So, the Great Frostblade is just that little bit of at initiative. Yeah, I suppose. AP2, you could start competing with, like, Suzerain a little bit, taking them away, mm. just to reduce that amount of attacks coming in. Yeah. I don't know, and it, it, it gives a little bit of a modelling opportunity. This isn't the greatest, like, sort of... To right. determine it like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, I'm going to find that and put it in the video of you. <laughs> you at that. Can take a grenade harness. Weirdly, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. With, because, like, anything that I'm choosing to go... Anything that's really hard, I'm just go, I'm going to go with Thunder Hammers against. Yeah. Rather than the claw, and I'm already striking last at that point anyway, so it don't matter. Yeah, so Lord's Bane. Model with a special rule may issue and accept challenges as if they had the character subtype. In addition, when fighting in a challenge, if the enemy challenger is removed as a casualty, it's a plus one additional combat res, basically. <laughs> it's sort of a very wordy way of saying Chosen Warrior. It's Chosen Warrior, but if you kill him, you get plus one to the combat res. Again, really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, he's... he's yeah. Just... I, I mean, it's no character on every model like Suzerain, but, but if I had that, though, I would always be going, I want to challenge your sergeant at, with these mm. units because then if I'm killing it, I'm getting two, technically two kills for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth it. That is just... 
It did, like, it's, I, oh, it's just not chosen. Right, so it's chosen Warrior Games Workshop. So, on to Grey Slayer packs. And this is one thing that got split down into Grey Slayer's Grey Stalkers yeah, yeah. Uh, from last edition, basically. So, Grey Slayer is 145 points for your tactical squad to spoiler squad equivalent. You get Bolt Pistol, Fenrisian Axe, Combat Shield. So, right then and there, Combat Shield, Fenrisian Axe. Combat Shield, I believe, comes to a two-point upgrade when you put it on a an assault squad. Yeah, I think so. From Rizzing Axe, two-point upgrade. That's already the difference in points between a tactical squad and this. Yeah, yeah. You get it's all tactical squad stats and stuff, but you get skirmish as well as line. So you get plus one to your save. Yeah. In, uh, well, plus one to the your two save. save. And a three-inch coherency rather than two. Yeah. You get relentless. Counter-attack one, as well as Heart of the Legion. Counter-attack one. Don't need your pack thing. Yeah. Weirdly. The, and only, so the pack thing, when we looked at it before, looks like a really good choice. As in, it doesn't stack up to the caster of runes or the speaker of the dead. Yeah. But everything we've looked at since has got counter-attack one. So your pack thing has just become redundant. There's no reason to take them in the majority of your units. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in a unit of veterans, but... I don't really think if you're doing that, I'm not too sure why. But veterans come with Nemesis Bolters, don't they? Well, they're not obviously taking <laughs> Nemesis Bolters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So, can take additional Grey Slayers, 12 points each, can exchange Combat Shield for a Bolter That's for free. That's really cheap, by the way. The 12 points for an additional Grey Slayer yeah. is really cheap. That's not counting in the two point for the Femurgeon Axe and Combat Shield at the same time. And Counter Attack. Yeah. And Counter Attack. And Skirmish. Any point, any model may exchange its Fenrisian Axe for a power weapon for five points each. Really, really cheap. Obviously, it's only one attack, but when you start stacking the fact that it's got counter-attack all the time, or you're charging, because you're sprinting and charging, yep. you always on two attacks and then three for the two close combat weapons, so it really adds up, even though it's only one attack base. You know what? I was, I was looking at these uh, myself, and I'm taking a great slayer packs. I was Obviously. thinking about the power weapon. Yeah. If I can put somebody in this unit that's got the heavy type so they can't run anymore, yeah. that means they're becoming weapon skill five when they charge. If you give them power lances, they get plus one to initiative on the charge. I know they're only AP3, but they get an AP3, plus one to initiative, and weapon skill five on the charge. Mm. I think it just becomes like a really... Oh, so like, just like spears. Yeah, like just like... Spields and shears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just think it becomes like a really good unit, in all honesty. I think it's really... It's bunking really... those, like, basic tactical squads yeah. and stuff. It's not going up against Just Aaron or Tyrants, but if you've got a tactical squad or a despoiler squad or an, uh, an assault squad, I think these would be really good at just going, there you go, that's five attacks Boom, that aren't coming done. against me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's not a bad loadout, actually. Like, one in five may exchange its um, fin raising axe for a heavy chainsaw, power fist, lightning claw. A few power fists sprinkled in there will be good when you get into, like, veteran units and stuff yeah. like that. Though you are hitting those veteran units on fives rather than four or yeah. because of the new fives. Table. Fives if you've... Um, yeah, fives instead of fours. So, really, yes, they would be good, but it's unlikely that You're still probably bound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. I reckon they're one of the. These are one of the best troops units yeah. in the game. And also, think about the board control you've got as well, because they've got a three inch coherency. So you can cover with a unit of 15 or 20 nearly half a board. Yeah. And you can charge anywhere you want. Yeah, it's just incredibly, incredibly good. I and mean, like I imagine. We don't. I, I think we'll move on from these swiftly because I imagine we don't need to convince every, anyone to take Grey Slayers yeah, yeah. in a Space Wolf army. Yeah. So, yeah, incredibly good. So, yeah, we don't need to sell this Grey Slayer pack any more no. than I think we already have, have. Yeah, in the, the Bob Minute rundown. So, Grey Slot Stalker pack, 145 points. <laughs> like a tactical squad again. Bolt Pistol, Chainsword, Skirmish, Line. Counter-Attack 1, Heart of the Legion, Relentless. It's basically just a despoiler squad type until you get to the upgrades in which they can get Bolters, Combat Shields. Combat Shields really cheap, actually, for one point. Mm -hmm. it's whether, so, at complete face value of their war gear, it's whether you think Fenrisian Axe with 
the combat shield or you want or your chainsaw which we said before statistically yeah, yeah, chainsaw yeah. comes out better but the main difference is one in five may take a combi weapon flamer volcac charger rogue to cannon caliber plasma gun melter gun as well as the one in five being able to take power fists and all stuff like that I don't think this is that great of an option over the Grey, Sl Grey Slayer pack. It's, go on. The one thing for me is that you're taking Volkite Calivers. They've got Relentless. Yeah. So you've got a mobile unit, and if you're taking them at the max, that is pumping out some It's only strips four. Of... Yeah, but it's only four. Yeah. And you can... Your, your game plan for these, because they've all got... Chainswords, bolt pistols are standard. So you'd have to start. He's getting... surely like running, and then you snap fire in that caliber. Yeah, yeah. You would have to start then getting bolters, which means you're changing the way they are completely. In, and as soon as you start putting bolters on them, exactly. bolters aren't good enough to pay that extra price. No, no, I agree. I think it's take it... a tactical squad if you're yeah. going to put bolters on them, or a tactical yeah. support squad. This is this is the thing. I think the the good is the, it's a nice extra bit of damage, but it's not brilliant. Yeah, it's just not worth those additional points. And also, if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to shoot with my plasma gun before I charge in, all you're doing then is making your charge you range. Still, I don't think you can... It doesn't say... Oh, because you've got Relentless, Relentless, you can fire it. Yeah. Oh, so that's why you've got Relentless, which I've been confused about. On yeah. Why have you got Relentless? So, I think, you know, all you're doing then is making your charge range longer. Yeah, and that as well, yeah. So, and... and um, Space Wolves excel just by being in combat. Yeah, so get them there. So get them there. So why would you do that? So I think they've got like it, nice utility, maybe holding an objective, but I don't really... I think this, the Slayer pack is just so much more aggressive. Yeah, if you want to be doing some... Uh, if you're trying to shoot with these, do it with a dedicated shooting squad yeah, yeah. that's more dedicated than one in five. Yes. If you want to get into combat, well... I know we've said chain swords are be are better than the Frenrisian axe, and so you add in like unless you get that plus yeah, one. Yeah, plus one for the combat the shield wrong. here. The um, additional for, of the combat shield in the Slayer pack, I I actually really like as an yeah, addition. Yeah. So I'd go. I would go there. I would go. Time. I would go the Slayer all the time because you've got the combat shield. You can then put an apothecary in there. So you've got a six up and a five up. Where these then these are thirteen points if you want the combat shield. Yeah. So you are starting increasing the cost of the unit for built in protection that's already in the Slayer pack. Yeah, one hundred percent agreed. So on to the special characters. Oh. <laughs> Gregor fell handed one hundred and thirty five points. Movement seven, weapon skill five, ballistic skill five, three wounds, initiative five, three attacks, leadership nine, two up save. He's got a bolt pistol, bolter. The fell handed. The fell handed is a frost. Claw, which is rending five up. With plus one strength. He automatically has crown breaker, so that's the, the plus one wound. Yeah. When, or plus one strength initiative. No, when he's killed that's, something. that's the void, hunger in the void. Is it? Crown, crown breaker, breaker is the one where he's um, the unit. If they're locked in combat, get oh. to feel no pain. Yeah, independent characters. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's going out to punk independent characters. Do I think he's good enough to do that as like sort of a prayer to level character? No, no, I don't think he's good enough. He's got five up in vulnerable. He's all right, and you'll get him to kill console characters that are combat characters. Yeah. But I don't think he's got enough to take out a prey to. But he is really cheap. He is really cheap, but I don't think it's worth that trade off in a combat army. I yeah. would say you always need the biggest to try and be having. You've got the, the biggest, biggest stick. Hideous You've got a guy around, stick, yeah. Because yeah. you can't. There's going to be that point where someone needs to kill the enemy leader. Yeah, and your and best chance of doing it is with your leader. Exactly, and also he's not a rune priest. Yeah. Well, there we go. So Haval Red Blade for two hundred and ten points. Weapon skill six. Prayer to level now. BS five. Strength toughness four. Four wounds because he's in cataphracty armor. Initiative five. He's four not attacks. In uh, he's. He's in Tartarus armor, sorry. Four, four attacks, leadership 10, two up save. He's got Hearth Splitter, which is plus two strength, AP2, armor bane melee. Power weapon, basically. Heavy Bolter, Grenade Harness, Iron Halo, 
Tartarus armor. He's got Battle Cunning, Master Legion, Relentless, Inexorable Counterattack, Fear, Fear One. And this has come into it quite a few times yeah. with Space Wolf things, which I think is actually quite cool yeah, yeah. that they've got Fear One. Bulky Two, Head Taker. What does Head Taker do? If taken as the Warlord, he automatically has the Head Taker Warlord trait. Thank you for that bit of information. <laughs> what was the fight in that bit? What is the fight I in don't that know. bit? It's like, Warlord, Head Taker. If he's the Warlord, he gets Head Taker. Then it's a Head Taker again. So, he gains Preferred Enemy Infantry Special Rule, in addition to his unit that he joins. Yeah. Um, may make an additional reaction in the Assault phase. I think that's really good... I don't think it's as good as the Fang of Mor the Howl of Morkai. The Howl of Morkai. No, I, I like that. I think um, it's, yeah, uh, getting preferred enemy infantry. These, everything seems to be infantry now. That seems to be the massive way the game goes. So, yeah, really like that. I think it's fantastic. Battle Cunning. Three units composed entirely of infantry gain scout. I think that's good for a special weapon squad and things like that. I don't think it's as good as we would like for a Space Wolf army where you have got Grey Stalkers which are charging turn one or two anyway. Yeah. Like, I know turn one if your enemy moves forward, but with Scout, you're not charging that first turn anyway. No, because you can't charge if you Scout, can you? Yeah. So, for that, for me, like... Is a no-go. Is, is, yeah, it, it seems it's, to be at odds. Yeah, and it's... The plus two strength on her split is good if you can combine it with Rag Grenades. You need a destroyer squad that he can't join or something that he can't join to really maximise yeah, that. Yeah. So it requires that double charge. I would prefer the Thunderhammer over that. I think the thing is that it's just striking initiative, which is still good. Yeah, it's it's worse also, than but a great stre Frostblade. Strength 6, Armour Bane. You're not doing anything, really. Like, not, most not, not, time, not, not most of the time. Not most of the time. Because the average on two dice is seven, so you're still not getting through that. You're re rolling wounds against Dreadnoughts. Uh, okay. But I wouldn't want to put him against a Dreadnought because he'll get squished. Yes. Yeah. Like, I don't think he is as good. Other than the fear one is what brings me back to, oh, he might be mm. that good. Oh, he might be that good. He need, I think he actually needs another wound because it's sort of like he's got the Space Wolf special armor. Yeah. Into the yeah, runic yeah. armor. So that would make him four wounds anyway, so he's no more spec. I suppose so is Gregor, and that's why they've got these plus one wounds over like a console level or predator mm. level. But he's in Terminator armor. I can take a Cataphracty guy with four wounds. And to do all that as well. Yeah, and my Cataphracty guy, if I take him a Cataphracty. Although he can't sweep, he's getting in he's getting weapon skill seven on the charge. Yeah. So he he's he's alright. Yeah. All, he's alright. So let's move on to, to Russ. Let's let's get the money shot out of the way. Oh, no, you want to do his wolves first, don't you? Oh, we're doing the wolves first? Yeah, yeah, he saved the best to last, mate. We should have James in here laughing. So, 100 points for the Wolfkin of Russ. They both got movement 10. Freki has 5 weapon skill, 5 strength, toughness, 4 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. Okay. Gary has movement 10, weapon skill 7, Strength toughness five, four wounds, initiative five, three attacks, leadership eight, movement five. So Gary is just incredibly so much better than Frank. I reckon that uh, Gary fights with like a rapier, like, oh, do you like Zorro? Yeah. <laughs> like, then he should have extra initiative for his duelist edge should be his uh, <laughs> tooth and claw. So he, they're fearless, both of them. Fear one, really good. Rampage two, Hammer of Wrath one, Feel No Pain five plus, Bulky four. Um, they can only be taken as part of a detachment if Lehman Russ is there. Massive surprise. They've got strength user, AP4, melee breaching, six plus. What, where, what, did he take up a slot, by the way, if you take him? Um, they don't take up a slot, but they're treated as a HQ's choice. Right. They're good. I, um, they're not... They're good, but they're not good. Right? They're good, I think, as fear bombs... They're light, so can run. Like they're running their initiative, so they're moving. They're moving fifteen, right? I think what you want to do with these isn't get into combat because they're only AP four. I think they're going to die in combat, right? It's eight wounds for Russ. It's it's just so where you put all your wounds on them. 
they're, they are a unit, right? So Russ can join that unit and be running around at his movement eight ra rather than held back to seven. But these don't have the Space Wolf special rule. So these can't run and charge. So a Grey Slayer pack is actually running and charging further. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm saying they're good because I think putting fear, a 15-inch movement and then fear yeah. within six, just being able to place fear about the battlefield, I think is quite good. Do I think they're brilliant overall? Not really. Wow. I think the I think the fear bombing someone is now so big. Yeah. If some if it's yeah, if it just fear bombing someone is just so big. I think that's why yeah, yeah. you potentially want these because it's a 15 inch, 21 inch threat range of fear bomb. Or do you want to take them for no, I wouldn't take them for hundred points. But do you know why they're good? Because they're, they're cool wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you, you, you sold me. You sold Boom. me. Done. And on to the big dog. What do you think when I say the big dog? The big dog. Is it Tim Westwood? Yeah. <laughs> so he's Lehman Russ, 150 points. He's got weapon skill 8, so better than most Primarchs. Ballistic skill 6, but that's not why you're here. Strength 7 with his Mega Fist. Toughness 6, 6 wounds, initiative 7, 7 attacks, leadership 10, 2 up save. Oh. Got the, the armour of Elevagar, the axe of he Hellwinter, the sword of Bale Knight, Scorn Splitter and Frag Grenades. <laughs> He's got Howl of the Death, other than like normal Praetor stuff. He's skirmish. He's skirmish, which is, yeah. Which is, which is great. Howl of the Death Wolf. Counter attack two, which is really good. Sire the death, the space wolves. So his sire rule is all Legion Stati space wolves special rule in the same army gain plus one strength when they successfully charge. So it's a trade off whether Fang of Morkai is better than that. Howl, Howl, Howl of Morkai. Okay. Um, in addition, may make an additional reaction in the assault phase, and once per battle. For the duration of that play turn, all models with the Space Wolf special rule gain plus one move. May gain plus one move, and any enemy models that include one or more enemy units, any enemy units that include one or more models with the Space Wolf special rule must take an immediate pinning check. So if you're playing Mirror Trade, match, If you're playing Traitor Space Wolves, and you've got Lehman Rose, Howl of the Death Wolf, everything's got to take a pinning check. Very good, plus one move to get that both plus one move and plus one charge on a unit that's already sprinting. Yeah. So it, then you've the got... first turn charges are set up with that. It's crazy. So he's got a two up save, four up invulnerable, increased to a three against flame plasma melter. In addition, all enemy models in base contact with him suffer minus one to hit when he makes a successful charge. That is incredibly good. So the first turn when he charges you, you're hitting on like some some things can be hitting on sixes. Well, most most things are going to be hitting them on sixes. Yeah, because anything that isn't another prime mark of weapon skill eight, he's going to be hitting them. Yeah, yeah. he's hitting them on sixes. Crazy, the sword of Bale Knight, plus one strength, AP two, melee, murderous strike four plus, fierce and ruin, mastercrafted, fierce and ruin is. When a unit suffers one or more casualties, makes a morale check during the assault phase. Roll an additional d six and keep the two highest. And what we're all here for is Brutal 2. It's Brutal 2. It's crazily good. It's Strength 8, but Brutal 2. Murderous, Charging first turn. Murderous Strike. So My, if you've got a 4 yeah. up, and then you've got your Brutal 2, so those two then are Murderous Strike. Yeah. So that's amazing. It's like, you could you could just be like, oh, look, I'm going to charge him by himself into a unit of Terminators. They're dead. Yeah. And then and he's got seven attacks, eight on the charge. Nine, because he's got two weapons that are not specialists. Yeah. So he's got nine attacks on the charge. Uh, with, with both Mastercrafted. So Axe of Hellwinter, Strength puts two, AP two, Melise under Reaping Blow one, Mastercrafted. So this is like your mook killer. Yeah. But, oh my God, that sword, man. It's, it's mental, isn't it? It's yeah. absolutely mental. Yeah, it really is. Scott, right, let's just get him done and then we can yeah. just... 
So, Scorn Splitter, range 12, strength 4, AP 3. AP 3, that's as good as Perturabos. Assault 3, rending 6. Rending 6 makes that better than Perturabos, because Perturabo can't get it. Bear in mind, he is precision shots, precision strike, yep. as a Primark. So he's putting all of those attack attacks where he wants. He's mentally good. Mentally good. 450 points, so he's not that expensive as a prime mark yeah. either. He's he's crazy. I don't think there's many prime marks that can stand up to him if he gets a charge off. The only one is Ferris in a unit of breaches. Yeah. So the way the way that you have to counter, I think, the minus one to hit is he's already incredibly high initiative, right? Yep. Yeah. You've got to start at the back of the unit, so he charges you. You consolidate in and still aren't in contact, but you can strike. He can't have then precision shot it onto you because you are out of engagement range. range. And you move in and not in base contact for the minus one, and then you smack in with yours. Yeah. Crazy. But crazy. Stuff. How often, do you know what I mean? Like, that's a really... You'll have to, well, he's you'll have to be right. inch perfect with that, wouldn't you? Do you know what I think you want to do with Lehman Ross? You have a big unit of Grey Slayers, like 20 of them. Yep. 20, like 20 of them, right? First turn, they all line up on the... Like, too deep, maybe, but they line up at the front. Everyone moves forward and runs, right? And they're running to, like, that 12 inches with the plus one... For the yeah, for the, for the howl, howl of the, of the death, death wolf. You then charge at the plus one because of your movement, and then you have a chance of that first turn charge with a massive unit, and you multi charge like anything that. You I don't think you go for their leader first turn. I think you just mook as many squads in their line, trying to actually avoid their leader. Yeah, yeah. Then when their leader charges you, I actually now get even more attacks than if I'd have charged. Yeah, well, yeah, because you get ten attacks if you if you get charged. Yeah. Because you've got counter attack two, so you're on nine, and then you're getting plus one attack because you've got the sword of Bell knight and the hacks of hacks of Hellwinter. Exactly. Ten yeah. attacks then, and I'm at initiative seven, which is really high for a prior marker as well. Yeah. So that is Lehman Ross. I can't I can't wank him off anymore. You can't stomach it. <laughs> can't, I just can't, can't stomach wank him off anymore. So if you like this video, if you like seeing Phil and you want to let him know, like the video. <laughs> Leave a comment below. <laughs> Tell us about our terrible pronunciation of, like, what was it? The Emir, the Emira class stasis bombs. Emira. Emi I think Emira. it's Emira. I think it's like Emira. an. I think it's an E for the Y. Emira. Like classic. Emira. Like classic stuff. Uh, so yeah, tell us all that. We love pronunciation corrections, and. <laughs> If you really liked it and want to support the channel that little bit more, there is a Patreon link below where you can get yourself access to the bounty tray as well as the Discord in which we all just can bicker about which space one is wolf. the best. Yes, yeah, Space Wolves <laughs> and the Primarchs. And that is it from me. And for me. And we'll see you next time.